Today I'm going to be talking about electron beam welding, uh, and and this is going to be a, it's a wire feed process, so a little different than the powder processes we've covered just a just a bit ago. So for these for this process, there's a wire feed coming down, and then the electron beam melts the metal into a molten molten puddle, and as it moves along, it'll just resolidify, and you'll build up the part by going back and forth and making all these different uh, little layers. Some of the process parameters uh, that this requires, it requires a vacuum, and then the guns can actually get up to 42 kilowatts of power. So that's that's a much larger, a la or um, lar larger than the lasers we just talked about in the last two presentations. And then some of the parameters there that we can adjust are the width and the thickness of the bead welds, uh, and that'll obviously affect how fast you're moving and and the different. Um, material properties that you're going to get. And some of the niche process capabilities is uh, that this, this do very, very large parts. Uh, the largest machine right now is 19 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet build volume. And that's that's not because there's some real constraint on it. It's just they haven't had a need to make it bigger because uh, that's the limitation of the vacuum. Uh, and they can make that larger if they need it. And then 7 to 20 pounds of metal per hour. So quite a bit more than some of the powder processes. And uh, one of the additional things you can do with this is to repair some mish-machined parts. Uh, similar to the last process, that could save you quite a bit of money on a large part that costs millions of dollars to build if you can just repair it a little and then rework it. A lot of the materials used are fairly high cost, titanium, tantalum, inconel, and then, oh, I have a misspelling there. Nickel alloy, nickel alloy, stainless steel, and tool steels. And then here's a few of the case studies. So Lockheed Martin uh, worked on this titanium propellant tank for their satellites, and it's uh, it's a spherical tank, so it's a little more difficult to build than some other types of tanks. Uh, but it's this process is ideal for these low production parts, where they're only making a few of them for these satellites. It's also reduces the waste quite a bit, so they get to build them a lot faster. They don't have to wait for all the the forgings, and uh, their their goal eventually is to print an entire satellite or all the components they need for a satellite. And then Skyaki is the company that produces the machine that I'll show you shortly, and uh, this is their uh, titanium gimbal that they that they made as a case study, just uh, to show you because it reduces the material waste by 50% on this particular part, because it has some complex features that would require a lot of machining. Uh, and the part they picked, they picked because there was currently no gimbal available, uh, so it reduced the lead time quite a bit that they could just print it instead of ordering something that they would then have to get a foraging for and some additional work. And Skyaki is the only vendor for electron beam welding that I was able to find. Uh, there's a similar ve uh, vendor I'll show shortly. Um, their main machine that they have available is this VX110, which has the the larger build volume. Uh, but most of the machines are going to be pretty custom at this point. Uh, Skyaki itself operates two EBAM systems internally, and they're building a third. And then they've only sold three since July of 2004, because they're very large, very expensive machines. And so Norsk Titanium makes something similar using a plasma arc-based direct metal deposition, uh, where they're still using a wire, but in this case, they're melting it with a plasma arc, which is a little different. And uh, they didn't have any machines listed specifically, but they do produce custom machines for companies. And then there's some additional work done by universities and some other, maybe some small companies that don't have machines quite available yet, and they're not necessarily using the same EBAM process. They'll probably call it something else.